hello guys i welcome you all to my channel engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet now we are going to solve this problem which says that replace the force system by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at this point o so let's say that uh, these two forces are acting on some arbitrary body let's say let's say that this green shows us some arbitrary body on which these two forces are acting this 455 newton and this 600 newton force so uh, this 455 newton force is acting at this particular point which lies on the line of action of this 455 newton force so let me draw the line of action of this 455 newton force so now is we know that the force has two effects on a given body the force try to move the body along its line of action along its line of action the this 455 newton force will try to move this arbitrary shape in this particular direction and if this uh, arbitrary shape body is pivoted at this point oh then this 455 newton force will produce uh, will rotate this arbitrary shape body in the counterclockwise direction so if a given force is acting along its line of action it it has two effects one of the effects is the the translation the translatory motion along its line of action and the other effect is to rotate now in this problem it is said that replace the force system by equivalent resultant force and couple moment if we want to move um, this 455 newton force let me write as a as a vector let's see let's say if this 455 newton force if you want to move this force if you want to disturb its line of action if i want to move it to a new point o which is not lying on its line of action then what we need to do is that since when i move it to point o it it has the same effect of producing the linear motion along its line of action like this it will have that same effect but what we are going to do by disturbing its line of action is that we are going to sacrifice its moment that it was going to produce about point o since when this that same 455 newton force when passes through this point o the moment arm becomes zero from this point o and <clears throat> and it's no more producing the moment about this point o so now whenever we will move a given force from its line of action to a new point and that new point when it is not on the on that line of action then what we need to do is that we will always replace this force by the same force of same magnitude in the same direction along with the moment that it was going to produce at this particular point so now we can say that we can move this 455 newton force to this new point o which is not on the line of action of uh, for that uh, 455 newton force so I will write that this is that same 455 Newton force, but we have to show, we have to find its moment about this point O that it was producing when it was acting at this particular point. So now let's say that, let's say that this 455 Newton force is F1. And so we have that same F1 force, and then we will find its moment about point O. So I will say that M1 at point O. So now we have to find the moment of this F1. So we have to resolve this F1 into its components. The angle of this F1 is given in terms of this triangle. So now if we are going to consider this angle, then in this triangle we are going to consider that small angle. Let's say if I have that triangle, so we are going to consider this angle. We are going to consider this angle. So now let me draw that triangle here. We are going to consider this angle this is 5 this is 12 this is 13 so this one will be if we if we are going to consider this angle then this one this component is the cost component we will write that this is f1 cause of that theta let's say if we are having that this theta so now from this triangle the cause of theta is the base divided by hypotenuse so this is the base this is the hypotenuse so this is 5 divided by 13 and similarly sine of theta is the perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so this one is the sine component this is f1 sine of theta so now we have to find the m1 moment this m1 moment of this f1 so i will write that m1 
is equal to so now as we can see that this cost component is passing to that point o so the moment arm of this cost component from that point o is zero so this uh, sign component of f1 is only producing that m1 moment so m1 is equal to f1 sine of theta and the perpendicular distance the moment arm of this sine component from the point o is this distance which is two meters so i will multiply this with two now we can write that now as we can see that this f1 sine of theta is producing the counterclockwise moment the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive so we will write plus f1 magnitude is 455 sine of uh, sine of theta is 12 divided by 13 this is 12 divided by 13 into 2 so the moment produced by f1 is let me calculate it so this is um, uh, 455 multiply by 12 multiply by 2 divided by 13 so this is 840 so this is 840 newton meter and the direction is in the counterclockwise direction so now when we move this 455 newton force from its line of action to a new point which is not on the line of action of that force so that 455 newton force will be replaced by this f1 force of same magnitude in the same direction parallel to that f1 given force and this m1 this m1 is equal to plus 840 newton meter now this f1 and this couple moment they replace this 455 newton force so now if we erase this four uh this 455 newton force from this diagram so uh, since we have replaced this 455 newton force by its equivalent force couple system so now let me erase this we have replaced that uh, force f1 similarly we can move um, this 600 newton force let's say that this 600 newton force is let's say if i move this 600 newton force to that point oh again i am disturbing the line of action of this 600 newton force so if i disturb the line of action of this 600 newton force when it is acting at uh, this particular point it's going to produce the moment about that point o so now when we, when we uh, move this 600 newton force from this point to this point then we have to represent it uh, by its equivalent force couple system so now we have to replace let me uh, move it here again so we have to draw the force of same magnitude parallel to that 600 newton force let's say this is that f2 let's say that f2 is 600 so we can replace the 600 newton force by its equivalent force and moment so we have to find its moment so this 600 newton force is producing m2 moment let's say about that point o so uh, let's resolve this uh, 600 newton force into its components so we will have one component in this direction this one will be the cost component and this one is the sine component this one will be 600 cos of 60 and this component is 600 sine of 60 so now let's find m2 the counterclockwise moment is always considered to be positive in my videos so now as we can see that this 600 newton force uh, this cost component is producing the moment in this direction that is in the counterclockwise direction so i'll write plus 600 cos of 60 and the perpendicular distance of this cost component from that point o is this distance which is 0.75 so we will multiply it with 0 0.75 and similarly uh, this sign component is producing the moment about point o in this direction so this is again counterclockwise so i will write plus and that is 600 sine of 60 and the perpendicular distance of this sine component from that point o is this distance which is 2.5 so i will multiply it with 2.5 so now we get 600 cos of 60 into 0 0.75 this answer plus uh, 600 sine of 60 
multiply by 2.5 so this is 1524 this is plus uh, let me recheck it this is this one is the first terms gives us 225 this is 225 plus and that is a uh, 600 sine of 60 answer multiply by 2.5 this gives us 1299 this is plus 1299 uh, and then if you add 1299 with 225 so that gives us m2 equals to 1524 newton meter and this is in the positive direction so now uh we, if we want to replace the 600 newton force if you want to move it from its line of action to this new point then we have to replace the 600 newton force by by a force parallel to this force and by its moment that is going to produce so let me erase this one as well so i will show that m2 moment on the diagram so we have that m2 moment like this so now we want to find we want to replace that force system that two forces that were given by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment at point o so now we want to add up this f1 and f2 we want to find the resultant so the resultant will be the resultant vector will be equal to the summation of f1 vector plus f2 vector and similarly the rx component will be equal to f1x plus f2x let's see if you want to find the vector and we can find the magnitude by just taking the sum that is f1x plus f2x so now we, we need to resolve f1 and f2 into its components so f1 will have one component in this direction and f2 will have one component in this direction and the angle of the f1 was given in terms of this triangle if you people remember that this was the that f1 and the angle was given in terms of this triangle so if we are considering this angle then this one was the cos component and this one was the sine component so let me write that this one was that f1 cos of theta and this one is f1 sine of theta and similarly this f2 as making 60 degrees since we are we were given initially so this f2 will have one component like this this one will be f2 cos of 60 and then we will have f2 sine of 60 so now we can say that our x the our x component of the resultant is equal to f1 this f this f2 cos of theta this is acting in the positive x the summation of forces along x the this will be the summation of forces along x will give us uh, the component of the resultant along x so f2 cos of 60 so f2 is 600 cos of 60 and the sine component of f1 is acting in the opposite direction that is in the negative x so i will write minus f1 is 455 sine of 60 this f1 sine of theta this f1 sine of theta is 12 divided by 3 this is not sine of 60 this is this is uh, f1 sine of theta is f1 into 12 divided by 13 remember so this is uh, 60 cos of 60 600 cos of 60 minus 455 into 12 divided by 13 so this is minus 120 newton so the minus sign tells us that our x is acting in the negative x direction and similarly the summation of forces along y the components along y so that will give us the r y component this will be equal to r x and this will be equal to r y so now we have this f1 cos of theta so i will write f1 is 455 cos of theta is 5 divided by 13 minus f2 sine of 60 so f2 is 600 sine of 60 so this is 
455 into 5 divided by 13 minus 600 sine of 60. So this gives us minus. So Ry is equal to minus 344.62 Newton. So now we can say that uh, the R, the resultant vector is equal to minus 120i minus 344.62j. So now we can represent the, those two uh, forces by its equivalent resultant. So its equivalent resultant, if I draw it here, if we have that same x and y direction, let's say if we have that same green body here, so then R will have one component in the negative x that is like this. You will have a component like this. This is 120 Newton. And similarly, we will have the component in the downward direction that is 344.62 Newton. So the resultant is acting somewhere here like this. And we can find the angle. Let's say if you want to find this angle of the resultant, let's say that this angle is alpha. So then alpha will be equal to tan alpha will be equal to the perpendicular. So the perpendicular is this 344.62 divided by base. So alpha is equal to tan inverse 344.62 divided by 120 this gives me tan inverse of 344.62 divided by 120 this gives me 70 70.81 70 degrees with the negative x axis so we have this angle alpha and similarly uh, we want to find the couple moment at point O, the resultant couple moment. So we have to add up M1 and M2. So that will give us the resultant moment. So let me write that the moment at the resultant moment about point O will be equal to M1 plus M2. And let's say if you want to write it as a vector. So M1 is plus 840. and we have plus 1524 this is 1524 so 1524 plus 840 this gives us 2364 this is 23 and this is plus so now the plus sign means that uh, the moment by that two forces about point O is produced in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in the in this direction the thumb will point out of the screen so from the z axis is out of the screen so we can say that the resultant moment we can say that the resultant moment about point O is in the positive k direction so now we can replace those two forces uh, by its equivalent resultant and moment like this so now we have to remove these two components let me uh, first of all let's find the result the resultant magnitude these are the components so we can find the resultant magnitude by applying the pythagoras theorem so the resultant magnitude will be equal to 120 square or we can say minus 120 square the, the square of the x component plus the square of the y component and then we will take the square root so this is uh, minus 120 square plus uh, minus 344.62 square this gives us 364 so the resultant is 364.91 newton so now if i raise these components So we can say that this is that resultant of magnitude 364.91 Newton and the moment, the resultant moment about point O is, is 2364 Newton meter. This is in the, the magnet, the units is in Newton meters. 
so now we have replaced those two forces one of the force was acting here and one of the force was acting here the magnitude of this was 455 newton and the magnitude of this force is 600 newton so we have replaced these two forces by its equivalent resultant and couple moment so now the summary of this problem is that whenever we are given a system of uh, forces and whenever we are given a force system so what we need to do is that we we just need to find the resultant uh, of those two forces you have to find the summation of forces along x and the summation of forces along y and then once we get the result and then we have to find the moment of both of these forces about this point o so then there is no need to repeat all those practice that i have done so just find the rx component just aid of the x component just aid of the y component that will give us the re the equivalent resultant and then find the moment of both of these and then uh, just aid the moments of of those two forces are more than two forces so that will give us the the equivalent resultant force and coupled moment at a given point so now we if i replace these two forces by a single force couple system so this is the resultant of both of these 455 and 600 newton and the resultant magnitude is 364.91 newton and it is making 70.81 degrees with the negative x-axis and those two forces the combined moment of those two forces is 2364 newton meter so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope it will help you in your learning let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for a solution of such more problems from Hypnostatics.